Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jamie here. I thought you might like to join me while I paint a Royal Games SU-85 tank. This tank is going to be themed around spring of 1944, but it's still going to have the whitewash from winter 1943, but it's going to be heavily beaten up to show the green underneath, as you can see. Miniatures from Warlord Games and it's resin with a metal gun barrel. It's really easy to build and quite nicely detailed. The first thing we're going to do is apply a K interactive Russian green shadow around all the panel lines and lower areas of the tank or where two parts meet. Normally I wouldn't bother with modulation for a whitewash scheme but as we're going to be chipping this heavily I thought why not. It's nice to get some different tones in there. You could also use MIG Amol's uh, range of Russian paints, so they're really nice, or also Vallejo uh, Russian green with different amounts of black and white. I'm using a Badger Patriot as there's no need to be really too detailed with this. Hopefully you can see the areas that we'll be hitting and be able to transfer this to your own tank if not doing an SU-85. The next colour is AK Interactive um, Dark Base Russian Green. This is going to go on the majority of the tank, especially on the sides and the lower areas. It's also going to go underneath the gun and provide the, the dark green base. I'm going to leave a few areas such as hatches ready for a highlight later on. And I won't be highlighting all the way up to highlight and shine from the modulation set due to the fact that this is quite a small vehicle and also because I'm going to be applying whitewash anyways. Too many colours and I think it wouldn't look as realistic as what I'm trying to go for. Hopefully you're starting to see a colour transition here guys. It's going to be more noticeable as I put a couple of lighter colours on. The next colour is AK Interactive Russian Green Base. It's quite a step up but once it dries it's a nice transition it's going to be the majority on the top of the tank and also the, the tops of the side panels but also on hatches and areas of interest it's not the most realistic effect until you do it down with weathering uh, but it does draw the attention to certain parts of the tank similar to the layering technique um, but via airbrush I can get it on smoother as I, now I put with a brush Sorry that I'm out of shot a couple of times guys, but I'm not really a big tutorial maker. And I don't particularly have the best setup for some videos, this was on my iPhone. You can really start to notice the transitions of colours right now. I'm going to be hitting it with one final highlight shortly. Of um, AK Interactive light green base. This final highlight is going to be mostly on hatches and right on the top of the vehicle. There's no need to apply. Too much of this is all you're going to do is create a light green tank, which is not what I'm aiming for. So we're going to hit the top of the gun slightly with this colour. Okay, the next thing to do is apply decals and a gloss coat of varnish. Before the varnish coat, I also do some sponge chipping. This creates a realistic chipping effect, and to do this, you just put some um, Vallejo German grey onto a piece of sponge, dab the majority of it off, and then lightly press it against the sides of the tank. I do this along. Uh, edges where paint would chip due 
due to crew climbing on top of and using it to hold onto whilst embarking and disembarking from the tank. I also hit the deck out a couple of times with this as I don't want them to look like they've been freshly painted. This tank saw a lot of action. How much of this you do is completely up to you. Uh, for a more chip tank obviously you'd apply more chips and you can also highlight the chips using gunmetal grey and applying chips on top of the chips you have already done. You could also experiment with using rose colours and uh, reddish tones. Okay, on top of the decals which have been glossed I'm going to apply Vallejo liquid mask. This is so that when the whitewash is applied, I'll be able to chip, uh, peel this off and reveal the decals underneath. I'm also going to be showing two methods of creating the whitewash effect. One will be to use liquid mask and a sponge to create chips in the whitewash, and the other will be to be using a cane interactive worn effect enamel fluid. You can mix both or use one or the other. Painting by hand, it's probably easier to use a liquid mask. Fair brushing, you can use both or just the AK Interactive Worn effect. Again, how much of this you do is completely up to you. If you want a tank that's still going to have the majority of its whitewash on, then you apply only a tiny bit of liquid mask. But as I said, as this is going to have fought through a whole season, I want it to be heavily damaged. And I want to show off the modulation underneath. Uh, with this liquid mask I hit any sharp edges and also on hatches. The next thing to do is to apply a coat of AK Interactive Worn Effect. Once the one effect has dried, simply apply some white paint over the top. How much of this you apply is up to you. Um, don't worry about getting a smooth even coverage really, as whitewash wasn't smooth and even. This is where the Patriot again comes in useful due to its large spray cone. I can cover the tank quickly. to dry and come back with a brush soaked in water and slowly start dabbing at the white. It'll peel off in a nice jagged pattern to create realistic chips. At the same time also pick off any liquid mass that you applied if you were using it. How much of this you do is completely up to you. I should be doing quite a lot for the purposes of this video. I also recommend using an old brush that you're not particularly attached to. This can be quite heavy going. Don't worry about the white looking too stark next to the green as later on we'll be using pigments to tint the colour. When you pull a liquid mask off the deck house as well you'll be left with a nice jelly pattern around the deck house. That looks realistic to me. The next step is to do an enamel wash over a gloss coat. Enamels are great because any overspray can, um, 
overspell can be cleared up using a rush soaked in white spirit. I'm also going to drag it out in some areas to create a brown tint as you can see on the hatch there. Use it to shed all the mesh areas at the back and any panel lines on the vehicle. You can also drag some down to create a few streaking effects here and there. What this achieves is to create uh, areas of detail that pop rather than just rely on natural light to do your shades. For this, use a synthetic brush as white spirit will damage your clean sustainable brushes. This can be a time consuming effect but is well worth the end result. Here you can see some streaks that I did on top of the decal again to weather the decal in with the model. Okay, the next step is pigment work again use an old brush for this. Here I mix some broken toad, um, old grime with some MIG thinner and start dragging it down to create streaks on the sides of my vehicle. It's also going to tint the white so it doesn't look so clean and bright. How much of this you do is up to you, as with all weathering. I'm going to be absolutely plastering this town from pigment as I like the idea of it being hidden underneath mud and grime. I mean, ambush for the German big cats. I also like the idea of it having tank riders leaving mud on the top of the vehicle that will then streak down with the rain. Broken toll pigments by the way guys are really great, so they're quite affordable and you get a lot for the price. They're also a very fine pigment, which means that you can do a variety of weathering techniques such as washes and streaks, as well as using pigment fixer to pile it on onto your tracks as you'll see later. What I like about using pigments for rush streaks and streaking effects is that they're a lot more accessible to people who don't want to be using uh, enamels and white spirits. They're also good for people on a budget as you can do a variety of techniques with just one jar of pigment. There'll be a link below to broken toll pigments uh, which are available through Artisan Quarters. If you're a member of the Bolt Action Facebook group, you'll also get a discount on these using the code Bolt Action 10, and you'll we'll get 10% off all their products, that, which includes magnets, carrying cases, basing materials, and pigments. I'm going to be picking up some of their basing materials soon as well, and do a video on them.
can see I heavily hit decals with pigment. I don't want them to look freshly painted and I don't want them to be too bright next to the tank. You can also use some pigment fixer on top of the streaks to seal them in. Pigment fixer guys is a liquid that will seal it like varnish but it dries super quick as it's, I believe it's alcohol based or white spirit based which I think this one was which was kind of getting interactive. You can also do some streaks underneath exhaust pipes using the ash pigment from Broken Toad. Hopefully you can see how the pigment tints certain areas where it hits into this browny grimy colour. I also forgot to film guys but on the exhaust I will use old rust and rust from Broken Told in a learning technique um, on the exhaust pipes. I will do similar streaks using dry pigment and Broken Told dust. This is quite light and so shows up really well on the green. Using broken toad ash and some pigment fix out, I'm going to create some smoke at the end of the gun barrel. While wet, this will look quite stark, but once it dries, it will fade and just tint slightly black at the end of the gun barrel like gunpowder has been shot. Another effect to use, guys, is dusting on pigment. This is where rather than using a liquid such as thinner or pigment fixer, you simply dust it on using a dry brush. I'm going to do that with some broken toad old grime. Sorry, grimy dirt, it's cool. I've been getting that wrong this whole tutorial, I'm sorry, it's really good pigment though. It's fast becoming one of my favourites. Put this on top so it looks like guys who have been clambering on top of the tank have left mud footprints. It will naturally gather in recesses. Also drag it down like so. I also used some fresh mud on the front of the tank with some pigment fixer just to create a different pigment tone at the front just to create a nice transition so that it's not all just grimy dirt and dust. Here guys, the last thing to do is your tank tracks, this is what we're going to be aiming for. To achieve this we're going to use a wash and pigment fixer as well. First thing is to get broken toad old rust, mix it with some water, 
and slip it onto the tracks. The reason we don't use just one pigment shade or effect is that we don't want it to look too boring. Only hit the tracks with this because the rules they will not lose due to the paint. If you do get someone there though, don't panic as we'll be able to cover it up in a bit. Next we put on some acrylic medium. I use the one from the Cortex. You can also use PVA glue. This will just hold the pigment for long enough for us to get the pigment fixer. We then slap some grimy dirt on there. Which we will then hit with pigment fixer to hold in place before varnishing the model once assembled. Finally guys, assemble the model and apply a matte varnish all over. I use for laying on that face model. Um, I hope you like this. There'll be a link below to Broken Toll Pigments. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time.